This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, March the 17th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Patrick. Born to Christian parents on the island of Britannia, modern-day England, Patrick himself was not very religious. He was the son of a deacon, so it may have been some kind of son of the preacher man syndrome. But at any rate, he was kidnapped and held in captivity for six years as a young man on the island of Ireland. And it was there in slavery that Patrick encountered Christianity afresh and became a believer. He writes in his memoirs, titled The Confession, that he prayed much, and one day he heard a voice directing him to flee his chains and go to a certain port. He walked some 200 miles and spent a few days talking the ship's captain into taking him home to Britannia. And after a series of adventures and miraculous directions, he made it home by his mid-twenties. He studied the faith and continued to experience divine voices and instructions. And in one such vision, coming in his late twenties, Patrick was told to return to Ireland as a missionary. He did, and the stories and legends are enough to fill a dozen books. Ireland is a place that loves its history and loves its culture. Today, the Feast of St. Patrick is part religious, part cultural, and part debauchery. Still, St. Patrick is a saint worth knowing and worth asking for his prayers. Today, in AD 180, Marcus Aurelius, the great Stoic philosopher and the last of the five good emperors, died. He arranged for his son and heir to serve as co-emperor for three years before his death. And he believed that the young man, Commodus, was ready and able. But Aurelius' long-studied discipline and self-denial had kept in check the lecherous, self-indulgent, and paranoid aspects of his son, Commodus. Soon after his father died, many of the ongoing military and political conflicts that had kept Marcus Aurelius so busy with his time as emperor concluded favorably and the emperor experienced a rare moment of almost total peace. Commodus, perhaps left with too much time on his hands, found himself in the midst of intrigues and scandals almost all of his own doing. He became increasingly dictatorial and violent. He decided to go into the ring and battle as a gladiator himself. He established a godlike cult around himself and gave in to extreme self-indulgence and to paranoia. He was finally assassinated in AD 192 by the prefect Latus and his associates. He was declared a public enemy by the Senate, and of course his name slowly became synonymous with the latrine. Today in 1941, U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt officially opened the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. It was the pet project of Andrew Mellon, who had been Treasury Secretary. He started collecting under the auspices of a charitable foundation in his name, and as one would expect, there was intrigue, there were accusations of fraud, there was tax evasion, but everything played out fine. And the art collection of the Smithsonian was merged with Mellon's own collection and endowed as the National Gallery. The West Building was completed in 1941 and the newer East Building in 1978 with an underground pathway linking the two. The outdoor sculpture garden was finished in 1999. Finally, today is the birthday in 1919 of Nat King Cole, born Montgomery, Alabama. He was a jazz pianist and vocalist who recorded over 100 songs that charted and who pioneered the three-man jazz ensemble. He was also a film and television actor and a Broadway performer. He was the first African-American man to host an American television series. From 1956 to 57, 42 episodes of the Nat King Cole Show aired on NBC in the U.S., He died in 1965 and famously sang a duet with his daughter Natalie from Beyond the Grave. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.